And the other interesting piece is peppermint oil. I think peppermint oil is really interesting. I mean, it's a renaissance for peppermint oil. It's safe, it's available, it's OTC, uh, and it seems to work for pain and IBS. Now, the trials are not great, let's be frank. I mean, the trials are not great, but there's still evidence of benefit. And I think none of us were really as clear about that until we actually looked at it more carefully this time. So peppermint oil, um, is something that patients can get and try, and if I guess if they get great relief, that's terrific, um, and that's reasonable. I think there are a couple of comments on it to add on to the peppermint oil thing. I just, just want to add a couple words of caution here. So first thing, realize that the way peppermint oil works in large part is because it's a calcium channel blocker. Okay, that's, so that's important to understand mechanistically and what the ramifications that might have. Secondly is that up to a third of patients that get therapeutic doses that, that is doses used in the trials for IBS of peppermint oil get heartburn. Okay, so it, it's it's not without its problems, and, and you know it's 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 interesting. Uh, early on in my career, I tried peppermint oil a bunch of times, and, and I had a lot of patients come back with, with a variety of different side effects. So one of which you mentioned in your talk, which is also constipation. Yeah, they get constipation, they get heartburn. You're absolutely right. I, I there's no good data on the cardiac problem. I don't know whether it's really an issue or not. To be frank, you know, we just don't have the big studies that I'm aware of to tell us. But you're right, mechanistically it might theoretically be an issue. But these OTC, and I mean it's reasonable to try. And the secret is not to break the capsule up. If they break the capsule, that's when they really get up. <laughs> okay, so they better swallow, they better swallow it whole.